Hello guys, I'm Craig McLean. Welcome to this very brief video where I'll give you a bit of an update on what I've been getting on with and also a bit of an announcement at the end. So anyways, it's probably fair to say that I have been taking a bit of time out of the car building for uh, for the, you know, the last couple of months. I haven't done a hell of a lot, but that doesn't mean I haven't been getting on with anything as this video will show. Most of the uh, footage you'll see are little improvements I've been doing to the Escort. Things that when I finished the Escort last year were just items that needed finished off. I didn't get them done at the time. And there were things I had in mind to finish off at a later date. So I've been doing a lot of them little uh, a lot of them little items that you'll see in this video. I have obviously been getting on with the Mini as well. The Mini is almost ready to go back on the road. So I'll probably give you an update on that uh, pretty soon. So, you know, I'm going to get the Mini back out on the road fairly soon. And I'll maybe get some driving footage in the, both the Mini and the Escort. But yeah, I'll, uh, I'll let you have a look at some of the jobs I've been doing. Uh, of late and let you uh, let you into the uh, little announcement I suppose at the end of the video so guys as just mentioned there is a couple of things that I neglected to finish on the escort when I finished it last year just little things now in the summit not nothing major uh, and one of them being the overflow from the radiator now every now and again the pressure builds up and it does spurt a little bit out of there and it makes the right mess of the engine bay. Now I could go and just get a piece of rubber pipe and run it along here and down there and P-clip it and I just think that will look absolutely crap. I've seen it on even some of the professionally built cars where they just use a bit of rubber draped down and I don't like it. So this is what I've come up with. I'm really quite pleased with it. So this is just one mil wall, eight mil diameter aluminium tube. And I had an idea to get a metre length of this, just from eBay, it's only about eight quid for the metre length, and make this. Now I'll show you exactly how this fits in a minute. This is gonna be P-clipped, and it'll have a simple elbow, which needs cut down, uh, and it, I'm, I think this is going to look really good. So that was done. Again, another purchase I've just bought. A simple 6, 8 and 10 mil pipe bender. Again, this was only £8 odd. Brilliant, brilliant tool for such a small amount of money. It bends that pipe absolutely beautifully. I'm, I'm really, really chuffed with that tool. Again, another eBay purchase. But yeah, let me show you this pipe uh, fitted in situ with these P-clips. And I'm sure you'll agree, it looks a hell of a lot better than any piece of rubber hose. And there we are in place. I'm really, really chuffed with that. Just looks so much better than a rubber hose. And as you can see, it kicks out the bottom to miss the anti-dive kit. And I've cut the pipe at an angle, so it's it's straight. The, you know, the, the cut is straight, although the pipe's angled. If that makes sense, it's all P-clipped in. The only thing I was a little bit unsure of to start with is how bulky that elbow looked. And I did think about getting another length of pipe and actually bending another 90 onto it and just having a straight joiner. But it's grew on me as I've left it. It's actually grew on me and uh, I no longer look at it and think, you know, I don't like it anymore. I'm I'm quite uh, I'm quite happy with it now. I think so. Yeah, that's uh, a job I've been meaning to do for a while because every now and again, especially on a long run, it does spurt a tiny little bit of coolant out of that overflow uh, and makes a bit of a mess of the engine bay when I get to shows. So at least now that is resolved. I've also gave under the bonnet a good clean while I've been at it today. So what else is to do? I'm still trying to find. A pair of sun visors. I'm struggling like mad to find any black or white. Can't find any at all. And I'm very soon going to order the tyre for the spare wheel and I can get the spare wheel strapped in the boot. Other than that, it's just a real good clean, a good nut and bolt check, and we're ready for another show season. Uh, I can't think of anything off the top of my head that's to do. Um, other than maybe if I can, if I can get hold of. Uh, hazard warning loom. I still need to put the hazard warning loom into the wiring system. Uh, I've got the switch which has got a blank in at the minute. I just need the loom 
and that's another little job to do at a later date but again now in the summit so yeah that's a nice one that's certainly a nice one to get out the way like i say i'm uh i'm more than happy with that so this is the spare wheel i've had for quite some time now i got this from graham at gs escorts must be over 12 months ago now i would say this is the rs style 6x13 i think it's i think the correct name for them is ronal uh, it's in lovely condition it's been powder coated and it'll make a lovely spare i've also got the strap that holds it in and the different set of nuts because these need different nuts to my image wheels i have ordered and it's here a 185 by 6013 tire and unfortunately that isn't going to fit into the wheel well so I'm sending that tyre back and I've got an order, a 175-5013, which I'm hoping will fit the wheel well. It's a much lower profile. So time will tell, but I'm hoping that then fits into the wheel well. Um, the problem there is the 185 by 60 was a Toyo Proxy to match the same brand that I've got on the car. And I can't get a 175-50 in a Toyo Proxy, so I've had to get a Yokohama, which is obviously a very, very good tyre, but I would have liked them to have matched. Never mind, a Yokohama it is on the spare, and let's just hope it fits in. I'll hopefully let you see it once that's done. Right, we finally have our spare wheel in place. I'm really, really pleased with that. Fits really nice with the 175 tyre. I've even been as sad as to tyre shine the spare. I know, it's pathetic, isn't it? And then we have a little RS valve cap as well. They were only £3 odd off eBay. And take note of the little badge in the centre of that valve cap. Because how good does this look? So in the middle of them pull-ups, there's a little recess. And the badges out of the spare caps that we only paid three odd three odd pound for fit absolutely perfectly into that recess. So I've bonded them in, one on both sides, and I am absolutely over the moon with that. That's just a really lovely little touch. So yeah, that's another couple of things out the way. Right guys, this is another little improvement I've been making. I've been after, you wouldn't believe how hard it's been to get a set of Mark 1 Escort visors. An absolute mega pain. Now I did get some a couple of months back and when, the, when, the, when I got them here and I come to fit them I realised something wasn't right and a bit of research showed that they were actually Mark 2 Escort visors, not Mark 1 as they were advertised. So I ended up sending them back customer was really snotty but he didn't un he didn't seem to understand that the were he kept saying well they came from a mark one and i kept telling him well that doesn't necessarily mean they're from a mark one someone could have fitted them to a mark one at some point he didn't seem to get that it was a bit of a pain to be honest so for anyways uh in the end i got my money back they were in great condition those visors by the way but uh just just not just not right this gap here from the pin there was loads of pin showing because the mark two escort visors are uh, a shorter but i finally got a pair of mark one escort visors and i've even painted the clips black because the clips were always gray and it just looked awful now these did come cream i'll put a picture up for you now i don't know whether they came in black i don't know whether black was an option but these were cream and i didn't want them cream because i've got a black headlining so speaking to some of the other ford lads um mainly Clayton uh, Wolno and Lee Reynolds that I speak to quite a lot through uh, through WhatsApp Messenger. They said theirs were cream and they simply painted them satin black and theirs looked fantastic so I thought, right, what have I got to lose? And oh my God, how good these have come up with a simple sprinkle of satin black. Anybody wanting black visors, honestly, that is the way to go. They look absolutely perfect like i say i've even done the clips to match so it looks it looks mint absolutely mint and the only one downside is this one here the mirror on it is as you can see seeing much better days but i've got an idea for that and i'll hopefully show you it before the end of this video i'm basically gonna sl splice in a nice piece of sticky back mirror finished it's like a mirror finished vinyl and i think it'll just I think it'll just do the job, to be honest. It's not really going to get used all that much, but I may as well make it right. 
So yeah, that's the only thing letting them down. But yeah, I've missed out on a couple of these on eBay. They seem to go for silly, silly money. But I finally got some. I finally got them fitted. And now we can go on drives in the summer without getting a bad head with the sun glaring in your eyes because it's been pretty awful recently with uh, low lying sun. Yeah, I'm absolutely chuffed to bits with that. I really am. And this is the next little improvement I'm going to make. For anyone who doesn't know what this is, this is your ignition switch. This screws on to the back of your ignition barrel. Um, and then obviously there's a little pin that inserts in the centre there that operates this, which is basically a switch. Uh, this one looks like it's completely unmolested. The little tab there by my thumb has never been bent out, so no one's had this in bits. And the reason I'm changing this is I have the same uh, ignition switch, obviously, on the Escort already, but when I got that ignition switch, when I did a continuity test on it, this one tests out perfect, but when I did a continuity test on my own, there was no continuity at all between any of the pins when you operated the switch, meaning there was something wrong with the contacts inside this switch. And when I opened it up, because I had no choice, the uh, the pins were all, the, 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 all the grease had gone really dry and it was it was just horrible inside. So I ended up cleaning it all up, putting it back together and it worked. It, it ended up working, but every now and again, when I'm driving along, I have to jiggle the key because the, uh, the charge light and the oil pressure light illuminate meaning that it's lost power on one of the pins uh, intermittently and you simply jiggle the key and it comes back on but i don't like that and it sometimes starts really well and others other times it doesn't start so well and i'm actually thinking it might be the ignition switch at fault for all of them issues well certainly for the the lights coming on on the dash so i'm going to swap this over i've just got this one off ebay uh cost 70 quid which is a little bit more than I'd like to have paid, but if it resolves the issue, then that is fantastic. So I'm going to have to whip the steering wheel off and the cowl to replace this. I can't see any other way I can get it, although I'll maybe give it a try. But yeah, I'll get this swapped over today, and uh, hopefully that'll resolve a couple of our little issues. You know, minor issues, but if we're going to make the car right, well, we may as well uh, we may as well resolve all these little issues. So I'll get on and replace this now. I'll. Uh, I'll let you know how we get on with that well that's that swapped over as you can see on this one there's some little doll uh, dollops of aldite in various areas and that's basically because when you bend them little pins out um, to, to release the the back disc to get into the switch you weaken the aluminium because it doesn't it, it, it doesn't bend many times before it starts cracking so to make sure it didn't come to bits, I basically put a little bit of aldite on each of the pins, which has done the job. It's held it together, but I've got a feeling this has been to blame for a couple of electro electrical gremlins, mainly the, the obviously the light coming on. But I think it might have even been to blame for the for the intermittent starting issue because sometimes you turn the key and you know it's not going to start because it's not turning over as fast as it should. So you turn it off and you turn it back on again and then it starts turning over faster and right away it fires up. And I've just got a feeling it might be something to do with the resistance in this switch. But time will tell whether this has made any difference. A bit more work to swap it over than I was expecting. To get to them screws in behind, the power steering controller is right behind it so you can't get in. So I basically had to take half the dash to bits to take the, the ignition barrel off to then take this off. So yeah, it took slightly longer than I was hoping, but it's done now. It fired up first time when I tried it. Everything seems to work. So yeah, fingers crossed that this ignition switch is resolved. That little electrical issue that we've had. Well guys, just spent about best part of three and a half hours, me and Yasmin, getting the car all polished up. And the reason why I'm getting it all polished up is today is Sunday and tuesday this week the car is going to be getting photographed by aid brennan to go in the classic ford magazine which i'm absolutely over the moon about so we've spent a good bit of time today getting absolutely everything gleaming wife spent ages on the rims and i i, I can't believe how dull the rims had gone and uh, she's probably brought them back to life so yeah i'm absolutely chuffed to bits about that so I'll keep you updated and I'll let you know when the magazine's in the shop for anyone that does want to buy a copy. 
but yeah i'm really really looking forward to this tuesday i've got a nice location sorted out and uh it should hopefully make the photos really pop hello well guys here we are on the day of the photo shoot i'm going to try and get you some footage of the car being photoed if i can and i think i've been extremely lucky so far i'm hoping it's going to continue this way because it is absolutely glorious uh, sun shining and it's done nothing but rain all night it's done nothing but rain all yesterday and the forecast for tomorrow is the same uh, today it's forecast sun and clouds all day so i think i've been very lucky and i just hope the rest of the day goes that way and we have no issues but it's time to get set off well guys here we are at the classic ford magazine photo shoot what an absolute fantastic experience this was on the day really really thoroughly enjoyable and here we are at an absolutely outstanding location this is discovery park or what was the former alcan plant at lily hall in cumbria uh, special mentions to chris rig for uh, for bringing this location up i already had this location in mind but i never thought i'd be able to get permission to get in here but chris knew simon on the gate he was also a fantastic help on the day and throughout he uh, he took me around the site and showed me all the different locations uh, and he was just very 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 helpful and uh, and, and and you know he was quite happy for me to ta to have the photo shoot here which is amazing and it was a brilliant experience on the day so thanks very much to chris and thanks very much to simon on the gate uh, like I say, it was an amazing experience and I'll just let you see a little bit more of the footage I got on the day. Bearing in mind that these photos and this footage is absolutely terrible in comparison to the photos that Aid Brannan got on his camera. the car will be gone in classic Ford magazine which I'm absolutely over the moon about uh, I basically sent them some photos and a bit of a write-up maybe three months ago and they absolutely wanted to uh, to show uh, to, to feature the car from the very start they were they were very very positive about it which I was chuffed to bits about uh, and then it was just a case of finding a decent location now I'm always looking for locations when I'm out walking the dogs and in the end it did end up being uh, one of them locations I used, it ended up being one that uh, a friend got in touch with me and said he could get me uh, access into a really cool location as you'll have seen on the uh, on the footage and he managed, to, he managed to get in touch with the guy on the gate and uh, secure permission to use that area which is um, Discovery Park which is the site of the old Alcan plant at Lily Hall so thanks very much to the guys at Discovery Park for allowing me to do the shoot there it was a fantastic day. Honestly, it's an amazing experience having a having a car photo shoot. Me and the wife spent many hours, as I mentioned earlier in the video, getting the car ready for it, uh, and it looked amazing on the day. Absolutely outstanding. So yeah, I do apologise for the delay in videos. Um, I'm hopefully going to be getting some more footage coming um, very very soon on both the mini and my mate Anthony has got a fair few videos now built up on his Escort Cosworth. I need to get all them edited and I'll hopefully start firing them out in the coming weeks. So thanks very much for watching guys. Uh, I'll try and let you know as soon as the magazine feature comes out. And then uh, anyone who wants a copy can obviously go out and get one. Thanks guys and hopefully see you very soon.